Black people are amazing, babes. I know. What yeah. is your opinion about black people? <laughs> Thank you so much for having. Here's all I'm gonna tell you. This is my thing. I love you. I, have I been, love you. I, I love have been you. invited to the cookout. Oh, every oh, yeah. She has. She's eating mac and cheese and ribs. <laughs> no. Wait, no, but no, she look, We're no. almost the same color. <laughs> hey, 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 y'all. It's your girl Fanita. I got a podcast. The show before the club. This is where we sit, chat, talk, and we drink. Hey. Bottoms up, bitch. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Bottoms Up with your favorite. She's sexy. She's black. She is me. It's Vanita. And y'all, I have the most iconic people sitting next to me right now. We've all grown up watching her. She was in um That's So Raven and The Cheetah Girls. And she's married to a badass bitch. <laughs> it is Raven, Simone, and Miranda Maiden. Go get your wig, go babe. Get my wig real quick. Go get Do it. Again. How are y'all? <laughs> we are alive. And me we too. We are alive. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. I am um, beaming, ecstatic, <laughs> um, trying not to be a fangirl and trying to play it cool, you know? You're not um, doing very good job. <laughs> just thank so you. Know. Know. You're not so doing true. very well and not being a fangirl. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, So just out of curiosity, how did you guys hear about my sexy ass? <laughs> Oh. Miranda told me about you. <gasps> yeah. You like me? <laughs> and I, like I was like, you, funny? Finita. Yeah, I basically did. I was like, she's funny. We're going to do her podcast. And then she's going to come on to ours. That's yes! how funny she is. <laughs> um, how long have you been married? So th three years. About to be four this year. The good thing is, is I'll so never mess that up because four we got years. married on a zero. Okay. So we got married in 2020. Oh, so it'll always it'll be. It'll always be the next year. Yes. And I'll just mess up when it's like 2030. I'll be like, Ugh. but other than that, <laughs> I'm good. You know what I mean? And yeah. how long were y'all yeah. dating before y'all got married? Nope. Um, we Let's met in 2015. Okay. And then we dated, broke up, got back together. Okay. We dated for like how long? Six months? Like a, no, it was like a year. Oh. I have to say, she was my shortest relationship mm -hmm. that I had had. Yeah. And then COVID hit, and I realized I have problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, she's down to be there for me while yeah. I go through them. That's beautiful. Now, really quick, let's unpack that breakup. <laughs> oh, well, what do yeah. you want to know about it? Here we like, go. What was the reason? Um, OK, how much time do we have? Uh, well, how much time do you need? Raven, <laughs> Raven broke up with me <gasps> because she was going through i'll let you speak for yourself no no but, you go ahead and speak for me we're married now okay so according until to, it's wrong and then i'll talk about yeah, it. Then you'll interrupt and tell me so raven told me that she broke up with me i didn't know in in the moment what was happening mm -hmm. so it was one because i was white real as fuck i'm not gonna lie yeah That's valid and <laughs> she was having issues with it that she didn't even tell me about mm -hmm. which then when because I, I didn't want to come off as racist or whatever that yeah. is considered. Yeah, you know what but I mean? you know what sucked for me is that finding that out years later, I was like, okay, there was nothing I could have done about it, mm -hmm. but I would have at least liked to know that my partner was struggling with these mm -hmm. thoughts and feelings and and had this idea that like the black community would reject her and mm -hmm. I could have maybe just been- Which is a valid. It's valid. Yeah, it's, super, it's all super valid. I just wish I had known. And then the other thing was I was, I asked too many questions. Yeah, she asked too many questions. <laughs> she was nosy. And like, yeah. yes, <laughs> super nosy. Yes. I was nosy sometimes. and white, and so she was like, <laughs> "You gotta go. I you gotta go." I'm not used to it. Snip yeah. the cord. Yeah. Listen, I'm not used to it. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to use it. The white part doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah. The nosy part, we're still working on. Yeah. But I'm also learning that, like, as my partner, it's okay to be nosy. But mm -hmm. even you know, growing up in the household that I grew up in, the you culture are always under like a microscope. Always under a microscope, but also just living in a black family, it's like, don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shut up. And I didn't understand that at all because to me, being like, hey, what'd you eat for lunch, was just normal. And to Raven, she's like, why do you care? Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was okay. awkward for somebody yeah. to like want to know what was going on. I feel that. And then also, I feel like every time somebody new comes in my life and they want to know about me, are you a Russian spy? <laughs> Immediately. Like, like, why you care? You don't know me like that. Exactly. Like, what do you what do you what are you trying to know? Exactly. What are you trying to find out? But I completely understand like the the white thing because I feel like especially on 
the internet and social media with the black community, sometimes they react weird when celebrities have or black celebrities have like white partners and it's it becomes a thing that is not. Yeah. That is not. And it's not and it's Yes, I understand how you would want to know, but at the same time, it's nothing that you can change. Yes, exactly. And so I needed to deal with that myself. And I think I I also know, you know, when you leave a relationship, you're supposed to do introspective work and work on yourself to be a better person mm-hmm. after that relationship. Otherwise, you're just continuing patterns that are super uh, toxic. And I really worked on that while we separated, not mm-hmm. by getting into another relationship, but, you know, analyzing why do I care what an entire other people say Mm -hmm. or culture says why does that matter to me am i happy is this making me feel better about myself and do i care about that person and then i shouldn't worry about the color of your skin you know what i mean (laughs) it's not about the color of her skin it is the content of her character character and how nosy she is (laughs) well okay (laughs) i love you babes I'm nosy too, so I can't even. I'm, I'm nosy as hell. And you know what? You're super nosy. Raven oh, yeah. is so nosy. She just wants mm. to be nosy on her terms and with her things. But if someone else is nosy, <laughs> it's like, mm. that's valid. Wait, what was it like eloping during COVID? Lonely, <laughs> <laughs> lonely, and masked up. Mm. Um, oh, lo- lonely. Yeah, babes. We didn't. We we had like a small group of friends come mm-hmm. to our wedding. But even now, we talk about having a bigger party with family. Mm-hmm. Family didn't really come. It was just who was in our baby in circle. circle yeah. You know what I mean? And then when we went to have our honeymoon, which was a whole nother conversation, I, I don't think we should claim Big Bear as our honeymoon anymore. I think we should claim Two Bunch Palms. What do you think? Can we change it? Yeah. Can cool. I get? Can I use that blanket? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> like, I'm cold. so cold. And I just feel... Yeah, I can feel the... Mirror. I'm in the tundra. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to... Be comfy. Thank you. I know. I'm just making myself right at home here. As you should. (laughs) Okay. So yeah, I think we can claim two punch bombs. Okay. Let's claim two punch bombs because to your question of how was it eloping, we didn't really elope, but it kind of felt that way. Okay. Um, When we had our honeymoon, we went to a super secluded place in, Mm -hmm. in, um, Big Bear. Big Bear that we will not claim (laughs) anymore. Was it bad? What happened? Oh my God. I walked into a place and I was like, Either they're gonna lynch me or <gasps> hang both of us. She felt super uncomfortable right mm-hmm. away. Big Bear and has that vibe. No, it has that vibe. It does have that vibe. Because I went to Big Bear last year and it definitely gives that vibe. Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah. a lot of like white, rugged mountain people who just like stare at you. Yeah. But I think that they would do that to anybody. But as sure, then being like, an interracial lesbian couple, it was like... Y'all might be first on the chopping block. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, we but had, we're not saying we encountered any racism there. If that's what we... That's the vibe. Forgive us. Yeah. But that's no, what I felt. No, we didn't. But I feel like every, like, cabin-esque place has that vibe. Ever been to Gatlinburg? Tennessee? No, where, where's that? It's in Tennessee. Well, Gatlinburg has that vibe, too. There you go. Right yeah. there, Tennessee. So I feel like any cabin-esque place gives, like, get out. Yeah. yeah. No shade. Immediately. Exactly. Okay, so do you guys think you will always live in L.A.? Ooh, no, I don't. I know, yes. and here's the deal. I know that my wife really doesn't always want to live in LA. So mm-hmm. I think this is, I'm from LA. Mm-hmm. So the only time that I haven't lived here is when we were living in New York together. Mm-hmm. And um, it really feels like home. I really do mm-hmm. love being here, but I figured down the road. I don't see us like retiring yeah. here. No, I've always wanted to live in Colorado. I've wanted to live I do not. in Europe. <laughs> really? Okay. There's there was no I do not. I'll take it. Okay. Wanted to live in Europe, um, Colorado and somewhere big mountain <laughs> Not the kind yeah, that feels get out, but <laughs> big sky. Like yeah. I need a big sky. I need a mountain. I need water. Mm-hmm. And I also like Europe, whether it's London or Paris or something like that, because of the historic feeling. Like when I walk on that mm-hmm. land, I'm like, oh, America's a baby compared to the rest of the mm-hmm. world. And I can feel that history and I like it. Mm-hmm. So. What's your favorite place to travel in Europe? I've it never was- been to Europe. I just went out the country for the first time to Jamaica like a few weeks ago. Okay. First of all, how did you enjoy that? Uh, I like Jamaica. We ended up getting scammed for a little bit. And then that's, that's um, I realized that I was westernized when I was in Jamaica because I was like, mm, there's no Instacart and or DoorDash here. Yes, there is not. Um, <laughs> so I was like having to go, go out and get my food. And I don't know. I kind of felt like an animal. Yeah, but at the oh same time, the food was bomb, though. The food was really good. I had some oxtails at this place called Pier One. It was so good. The jerk chicken was good. You got festival? 
No, I didn't. You didn't get festival? Oh, it's like cornbread, like a fried hot cornbread. Oh, it's good. Girl. And then I had like some lobster tail on the on the mm. beach one day. It was fire. The food in Jamaica was great. Um, I had a good time. I would definitely go back, but I would stay in a nicer resort. Did you swim? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was high the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> I just made sure you experienced it. Right How Raven was in Jamaica, too. High yeah. the entire time. I feel like if you're going to Jamaica and not getting high, why are you there? For the food? Oh. For or the, the beach? Or the experience? <laughs> for the, the, for the, the people? The water? <laughs> Maybe LA has changed me. Uh, <laughs> um, I would suggest that you visit London. One, mm -hmm. yeah. English speaking, so you don't have to worry about that. London is such a hub for different cultures that mm -hmm. you can venture out from there. Um, I really loved Budapest. Really? I loved Budapest. Great food, very interesting, but great mm -hmm. food. Japan is another one. I want to go to Japan. Definitely suggest. Yeah. Your vibes right now are giving me kawaii all day, like super. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Super Japan, so yeah, you should go. Okay, so your dream place to settle down is like Colorado or somewhere or Mountain Ask. And where's where's yours? Like your dream place anywhere, anywhere dream in the world, place, babes. anywhere. I don't know. That's hard for me because honestly, right now I would just love for us to buy the house that we want to buy mm -hmm. in LA. Like I'm just like, let's just be here. Let me. You let know, me tell you we've been house place. hunting for three years. What happened? Baby? She wants shade. Mm -hmm. She wants not too hot. <laughs> okay, not too cold. Okay. Not too cold. And she wants to make sure that all of her amenities are within a five mile driving experience. Yeah, I love that. Okay. I want to be able to like rollerblade to Air One. So <laughs> that's LA. how close it has to be. So so LA. LA. <laughs> but also, also, I want like, I also see, I see, okay, see it with me, okay, guys. Okay, I see like, we're doing it too. yeah, okay. It is 72 degrees. Okay. There is a light breeze. Mm -hmm. You go outside onto your porch mm. and you look out over this amazing vista. Oh. And yes, okay, kind of like that. Kind of like in, in Beauty and the Beast, yes. which is not, that's that Ariel. Was that was a little, I know, I know. But do you remember when she's like, um, there must be more than this in Angel High. That's and then she, well, okay, but she, she like opens <laughs> the did. thing and yeah, she yeah. sees the view in the waterfall. You want a little mountain yes. town? No, that's South Park. That, you know what? That was um, that was the south of France. I think that oh, Beauty oh, and the Beast fancy. took place in. So right. maybe Let's go to the south of France. Okay. Down. Heard it. Give me that tape because we're going. <laughs> but <laughs> we're it also could that. be really. I don't know. And I want to like ride a horse. Like Ooh, I want to okay. have a horse. Have you ever? I've never been horseback riding. <gasps> yes. Oh my Ooh. God! You, if you, I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared. I want to. I think to we go. have to take you horseback riding. Yeah, I, horseback I would love to go horseback riding with y'all. Oh my God! Oh my God! It's so we much should fun. literally do that as a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be that crazy. I've that never would been be on a horse. We both, we both we took it. lessons as kids. I'm an English writer. What are you? You're English, right? I rode English for many, many years. Yeah. But the, I also, there's a difference in the riding. Yes, yeah, there's it's, Western and English. Oh, yeah, okay. so a Western saddle and an English saddle are different. One you hold on to with mm -hmm. you hold on and Western, and then and then English, yeah, there's you hold this it is a whole way. thing. And then there's like this posting to, okay. that's English, and then Western is just like riding. Okay. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. So you should yeah. be used to the Western. You probably would have <laughs> Western riding. That's how I'll be. There it is. There yeah, it is. I might be able to ride a horse. <laughs> Western is a lot more. She She's filling it fully. Western is a lot more um, connected to okay. your horse in a yeah. way. Like you are more in the saddle. English than, is like those hats and like stirrups yeah. and you got the outfit. It's like equestrian dressage. Yeah, it's kind of. I think I would eat down like a horse riding outfit with the, little, yeah. with the little hat and the long black Okay, sleeve. Cowboy my, Carter. Yeah, Hell my, yeah. my, mm -hmm. Have you listened to the album? Yes, Was I have. Thoughts? Thoughts? Thoughts, thoughts. Um, Bodyguard is my favorite song. Period. Yep. And it's Beyonce. Yeah. We, we can't say. Have you heard I, it, Raven? We can't say anything mm -hmm. bad about Beyonce. <laughs> you like it? Thoughts? Thoughts? <laughs> my wife. Okay. She'll, she'll take that. She'll take okay. that for me. <laughs> I love um, Most Wanted, the song with Miley Cyrus. That song is so pretty. I love it. It is a beautiful song. I think Beyonce is amazing i mean yeah. i think I that's just I feel like that's a, that's period just, yeah, yeah period, period. so it's like even if it's not your favorite favorite she still is beyonce, beyonce. and artistry. making amazing exactly. music and yeah. she has amazing songwriters on that album and there's a lot there the mm. artistry that is beyonce is unmatched hasn't happened personally i think since michael jackson in a way so kudos um but that's i beyonce. i agree um, let's talk about babies. Have a baby by me, <laughs> baby, be a millionaire. Have a baby by me, baby, be a millionaire. What's in the, in store? Are we ever going to get a baby? 
<laughs> oh. Um, Listen, but, I've always wanted kids. I want four kids. Dang, um, girl. Yeah, I know. That's I what I said. I want four kids. <laughs> two of my own, and I want to adopt it. Mm-hmm. But this was before I got married. Okay. So now that I'm married, it's the conversation between both of us of what that actually looks like. Mm-hmm. And babes, what was your pre-marriage baby combo versus what you want now? Well... Okay, I always thought that I was going to have twin boys. Okay. Like, from the time I was young, I was like, I'm going to have these twin boys, and that's going to be my life. Now, also, I'm a birth doula. I have a different relationship to pregnancy and postpartum and the journey. And also, like, I know it's going to be really shocking to you, but Raven and I are old. And <laughs> she ain't lying. Yeah, she's 38. Well, yeah. I'm 36. Okay. Like, that's, that's old? Well, technically, making. for mm. either of us to be pregnant, it would be considered a geriatric pre- geriatric pe- pregnant. I can't even speak. It <laughs> would be con- we'd be considered geriatric. Those doctors pregnancies. are not for that. No, they're not. They're not. So it's, it's really it's really wild. But I think that as I've gotten older, and as we've been together longer and longer, a part of me has become more selfish. Mm. Where I'm like, even with having our puppy, who I adore, I'm like, God. You know, we still have to make accommodations around it. If we have this baby, our life would change drastically. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying no to it, yeah. but it's just, it's a big... And I'm from the mindset of, you better strap that baby on, baby on your back and let's go. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I mean, like, no shade. You guys are wealthy. So, like, <laughs> a baby ain't gonna stop nothing. Like, Honey, you know what I'm saying? Like, I will, but that's my brain Except set. my sex drive, my sleep schedule, my freedom. Freedom? <laughs> <laughs> yes, just to like She's walk out no, of the no, house. You, you are, you are right. Because I used to be like a anti having a baby when I was like younger, but now that I'm like 25 and sexy, I do want a baby because I just think having like a little finito would be cute as hell. Adorable. But be. I was like in the mindset where I wanted to be like super selfish. It's like, damn, I have to spend my money on a kid. Like I have to schedule things around my kid. I can't go to certain things because I have a kid. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think that's why I want to like live my young hot 20s, and then once I'm in my 30s, I start. Would you want to have a baby single? Like if no, I want to be married when I have a baby. Okay. <clears throat> speaking of marriage and speaking oh. of me, um, <laughs> I actually am a girlfriend now. I just got asked this morning. Yes! Congratulations! <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I know, right? <laughs> you went, you're going steady. It's official. We're going steady, like hand in back pockets walking down the hallway. Oh, oh, I love that. Yeah, he asked, you... me to be this, he asked me to be his girlfriend this morning. Um, so speaking of us and my new relationship, what advice do you have for You're someone? exclusive. I know. <laughs> Good for you, <laughs> girl. So so, okay, babes, you first. I love relationship wait, advice. Yes, let's talk too. about it. Relationship advice. But but from our straight brain. From a straight brain. Okay. I'll take, I'll take the gay brain. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the same. My, yeah. my advice yeah. is the same, which is... Well, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Mine is... Okay. Be patient and remember that when things get hard... That doesn't mean that that isn't your person. Mm. Things are always hard in relationships. Mm-hmm. And if you don't face it with this person, you'll face it somewhere else. And this is assuming that this is a person who treats you well, mm-hmm. you're compatible with, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, it's a healthy dynamic. But it does get hard and you just have to be willing to trust and understand that the mirror that comes up is one that is worth leaning into and looking into because if you're able to get through it and do the work, you will be a better individual for it and you'll have a stronger relationship foundation. That was a bar. You ain't that. You ain't that. You true. You're welcome. Done. What's yeah. yours? Um, you're, you're obviously dating a man. Mm-hmm. Um, men's brains are different than females. Yeah. And it's a different language that mm-hmm. you have to um, translate. Mm-hmm. And I feel like As a strong female with her own business and her own thing, you sometimes can feel like, oh, I have to tiptoe around Mm. this guy because he will feel demasculined if you have more success than him. Mm -hmm. And hopefully he's not that. No, he doesn't. He's not that fragile, but that can come up sometimes. But that doesn't mean that you dumb yourself down. Mm -hmm. That means that person has to come up to Mm -hmm. you. And I say that because many relationships I've been in, all kinds, it's like, I have to remember to stay in my best self Mm -hmm. and let that person rise to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I say that from the straight brain because sometimes with females, the conversations are a little bit easier to Mm -hmm. have to get to that moment than it is with a male. Um, uh, 
opposite sex relationships. Um, and then the other thing is keep them happy. Yeah, you know I do. <laughs> you just got to keep them happy. Eh? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Females want that too. You right. You're right, you're right, that's, you're that's right. a human thing. That's a human thing. Keep, keep them happy. person happy. <laughs> do you two have nicknames for each other? Yes. What are, you, what are your top nicknames? Babe. Babe? <laughs> I call Raven Shy Guy. Oh, that's wow. like my number one that's nickname cute. for her. And wow. it's so cute because look at what he you does to her. You do the like Shy Guy. It's so cute. <laughs> She's do. such a shy guy. Um Ugh. and then and then babes we're okay. both babes but we're both my babes. what tell her my real nickname Biggie Yeah her your real, your nickname is Biggie her mm-hmm. nickname is Biggie it came from a childhood situation where her sister couldn't pronounce her name mm-hmm. yeah. and so she's like just call me Biggie and then That's she crazy. got a tramp stamp about it oh what really <laughs> yeah lower back lower back and oh, it's so real. literally since I was like six years old my sister has been calling me Biggie my sister only calls me Biggie now I'm 36 mm-hmm. her and mom, she's 30 her mom her sister only your dad your dad doesn't call you Biggie he calls no, you uh, he's never called me Biggie no he calls, he calls you, me Miranda no he doesn't he calls you Miranda Sometimes hey, when he's being nice, yeah. <laughs> when he's being nice, we'll unpack that later. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Hey, we let's we, we can unpack anything. <laughs> I don't have a degree in therapy, but I like the gab. Yeah, there we go. That's all you need. That's all you need. The gift yeah. gab. What's I'll your see. nickname? Uh, my, for my my man calls me mm-hmm. Nita. Uh, we yeah he does call me, he calls me Nita sometimes not really but we call each other Pooks. Oh, it's like it's like pookie. short for pookie. Yeah, yeah that's cute. So we what a pooks? pooks. Yeah, we call each other Pooks, babe, baby, babe. Have you seen Pookie on TikTok? Uh, that Pookie. No, it's um, the, oh God, what is it? It's the guy. It's okay. It's a relationship. It's her name is Campbell. And then it's another. Oh, where they get dressed. Yeah. And, and he's, he's like, like, babe, you look so good. And God. he's like, today Pookie's wearing, they're a Southern couple and they go to like Waffle House. Mm-hmm. It's like today Pookie's wearing this, this. And she's always like, yeah, I'm in Chanel and this. And it's like really nice. <laughs> I've only seen the parodies of it. I've actually never seen one of their real oh, videos. And I know you haven't. You guys have to see them. They're crazy. You know, what's interesting. Just bringing that up. You should also just go through your partner's TikTok algorithm mm-hmm. and see what that looks like. Yeah. And then to see because our algorithm is extremely different. It what's is. on yours? Boy, I got a lot of LGBTQ plus. Love. A lot of like. A lot of black comedy and a lot of weird uh, um, universal contra- not, um, conspiracy mm-hmm. theory type religious stuff, mm-hmm. but not like new mm-hmm. age religion. What's yours? Clearly like white <laughs> southern <laughs> married couples that call each other Pookie and eat at Waffle House. <laughs> And then, like, skincare. Yeah, you got a lot of skincare, babes. Yeah, I get, I get, like, hair, makeup, a lot of, like, comedy stuff, like, a lot of skits. Yeah. Uh, I watch a lot of mukbangs. So do we! Yeah, I love them. I'm yeah. obsessed. So, how obsessed? Because every morning, I have to watch it to eat, we watch it for lunch, and then we watch oh, it at that's... night. You've pulled back, though. That's no, 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 how I we watch use... saying every morning. Oh, really? When I eat breakfast. I have to eat with sometimes. Skin. Sometimes when I eat, like I'll watch a mukbang, but usually I just like watch them nonstop at night. Like I'll watch them for like hours at night. Have mm-hmm. you seen like Bongil or we watch Korean where they like eat it super fast? No, they don't no. eat it super super fast. But she does like Tiang. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. She eats over like three hours, but the video is only like twenty. Right. Minutes. Oh dang. Yeah, That's we crazy. we have like a whole Korean network of people we watch. Like we watch Bongil, Tiang. Kani Kani. Yeah. Um, oh, y'all are real fans. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, it's really, and then we also have, like, Sunny Side. You ever watch mm-hmm. Best Food Review Ever or Best Ever f- Food Review? No. Girl, get into oh, it. I will. We're going to have to give you a yeah, yeah, list of moisturizers and a list of <laughs> yes. mug bangers. You got look it. at her glow. Look at her skin. Her skin looks amazing. Like, so. they, yeah. Um, Miranda, what yes. were you like growing up? What was I like growing up? I was... You can check it out on her sub stack. She'll tell you there. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> I think that I was really adventurous mm-hmm. and inquisitive as a young kid. And then around seven, the shit hit the fan. Mm-hmm. And then I became anxious and um, fucked up, mm-hmm. you know? As we all do. Yeah. You know, your vibe reminds me of um, Daria Speaks. You remember that cartoon? Uh, yeah, we know yeah. Daria. Yeah, Leslie, that's Hell what your vibe yes. reminds me of. You reminds me of Daria. I love that for you. That's so funny. You're like so like cool and chill. Oh my God. People tell me that and then it's funny because I'm the opposite of cool and chill. I'm like, sure, if that's what you <laughs> I'm I'm such a nervous wreck and such a worrier. 
You had it well. I, I think I'm a really good actor. She is yeah. a very good actor. That's, Check me out, Anna. That's this a, show. That's a, <laughs> I was about to say, that's a little sneak peek to let y'all mm. know. She just got an acting job. Yeah, literally, I just had an acting job yesterday. Miranda, I have a, I have a follow-up question for you. Oh, give it to me. Um, I so I heard through the grapevine that you hadn't watched That's a Raven before you met Raven. Was it perhaps because she was a black female lead? <laughs> Both you bitches looking at me like that. That is hilarious. <laughs> and here's the deal. I know that every it's, it's this so, one over here. Yes, this one over you, here. No, that was like perfect timing. You too. Um, so no, it wasn't actually. I think it was because I was watching God knows what. At Sex that time. in the City. No, I you watched Sex in the City. No, Sex in the City wasn't out when you yes, were. it was. Baby. Yes, it was. Oh, was Sex in the City's old. Okay, then I was watching Sex yeah, in the City. Yeah, she was watching Sex in the City. But so many people at a young age have like, got. You need a whooping. Why are we watching Sex in the City? They don't get whooping. No, I was very. Yeah, I, no. I was spanked. It just wasn't no, no, called. No, you were spanked. It wasn't you called get a whooping. whooping. There's a difference. <laughs> okay, because why? What does a whooping have to? A whooping has like an object. Yeah, and you continuously get. Does hit a with wooden that. spoon count? Mm, no. no. Do you guys know how bad a wooden spoon stinks? It does hurt. It hurts. Have you ever had to go pick a switch? No. And my well, mom used you know, to make actually, me... that's not so nice to brag about. <laughs> I know. You got to switch. I'm a brag, bougie brag. They were like, pick which Gucci belt you want. Oh, <laughs> Let's hey, go. Listen, this was like with elegance. No. I'm, I, uh, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry that both of that happened to you. It's like corporal punishment. It's not okay. I don't like it. Um, but back to that, so Raven and that whole situation. <laughs> just, because here's just, the deal. Just cover up our talking the, paper. <laughs> the internet is mad at me for it. There are so mm -hmm. many people. It's funny because like I did this vi TikTok video on the trend of like, um, I'm Raven Simone's wife, da da da. Mm -hmm. And the number of comments that people left saying, you think you can do that trend and you didn't even watch the show one time. I'm like, how does that make sense, sir? Like <laughs> you're married. I'm to married Raven. to her. Yeah. And the fact that I didn't watch the show actually was something that Raven appreciated. I was about to say it probably was better because you're not like, you know, like, you were like, like, you know, like, you like yes. you girl, yeah. and I think though, I was just watching something else at the time. I, I don't know my sister. I think I was also a little too old yeah, we're because the same my age, okay. my age. sister who is five years younger than me watched that so Raven loved that so raven and now that i've seen all of it i love that so Raven. yeah that show is so it's fucking brilliant good. it's so good. <laughs> was so good it's so good you know episode like scared the shit out of me when i was a kid the scarecrow episode where you went to go like visit your other family <gasps> oh your country playing. cousins yes that episode freaked me the fuck i love out. country cousins that's my favorite episode really that was that my episode favorite episode terrified before. me i still <laughs> still terrifies me it's okay it I terrifies my mom too the baby scares her mm -hmm. and like everything that happened there and it was kind of there we had some goo moments mm -hmm. in there too so that's isn't fair. it crazy did you know that she played almost like every yeah, you, character you played every character yeah okay yeah eddie murphy style yes i'm saying you were sorry raven i have it's to okay. glaze i'll just I have I'll to listen gaze. i'll just close my ears like so you, can go you are <laughs> so crazy talented and Thank the fact you. that you were doing that as a teen like you inspire not just this black girl, but millions of black women around the world. Like okay. you were my, my <laughs> heart and soul. I, I love you, you down. Thank and you. like, I'm just so happy that you're even like here next to me right now. Like this is like, this is really like a Hi, surreal friend. moment for me. Like a dream come true. Cause you were like, I don't know. You just showed me that like, I could be like you, like you mm -hmm. like paved the way and like, just showed that black girls can be leads. We can be stars and we can have our own stuff on our own shows and we can be like, boss ass women and you're just so inspiring thank you and because of that you're doing it for the next generation and so i did my duty exactly you know like you're, you're so thank so... you i appreciate that and thank look. you for doing it oh look you her guys gave me goosebumps oh. her face though <laughs> i have my glasses on I <laughs> got a tattoo you got raven names on it yeah, yeah. but yeah. Also, yeah. Her it? that was just about my goosebumps <laughs> you got her names on it we got our we got our symbol our oh, nice. I'm like yeah. we have a lot of little yes. I don't have her full name. Okay. But I think I was thinking about getting a neck piece, just Raven. Right. Yeah, you should like down. like Krishan Rock. Yes. Like just Raven's face right there. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Or, or maybe you want on the cheek. Oh, even better. Yeah. Just right. Yeah, would, like there. And there's just, you would hate that. Because yeah. Raven looking at Raven. <laughs> Not all, a good thing. Yeah, she'd be like, bye. 
No, seriously. I feel like I'm starting to like get that because I don't like because I don't even like watch my podcast back anymore because I just I look at myself all the time. Yeah. Like I see myself all the time. Like sometimes I just need a break from me. And no, that's hard because I'm so gorgeous. Like, you're even so I, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I have a problem looking back at the Raven Baxter world mm-hmm. just because I'm not that. Mm-hmm. And any like even with the new that even with the new Ravens home, I'll watch it because I'll direct mm-hmm. it and I have to see it back. And I'm just like, that's not me. Yeah. And I can look at it. But when I have to like, if she put that on back in the day when I was like. <laughs> then I'd be like oh god no yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like when you were filming that's a raven do you feel similarities with the character because you're very you're very different than I expected you to be thank like, you like you're like you're super like laid back like you're a cunt not like I not, am not, I not, am like, though not like you're a cunt but like you're a cunt yeah. you know what I mean like oh, you're no, super both. yeah okay period <laughs> me too I'm both but like do you feel like then you felt more like raven when you were acting as her, or were you always just like a kind ass bitch? It's funny. I have always been this way, but I knew that it would not translate. Translate. So I only did it when I closed the door to my house. Mm-hmm. And then when I would be out in public, I would do what was necessary to play the game. Play the game. Um, and then at the same time, I think Raven Baxter, with or without a wig, is just the psycho version of me in mm-hmm. general. Um, but yeah, it's it's. <laughs> I think it's just you know in in that way. Yeah. But also you used to say that back in the day, kind of like in the peak of that time, you would go out and you'd be in the club with like Lindsay Lohan mm-hmm. and these, but you would know how to just kind of retreat oh, and I was, hide. I was, and, I was like this in the club, like literally yeah. with a, but it was. And no one would know it was, it was you. It was Hardy days. Mm. So I had the low trucker. Yeah. And Hardy's making a comeback. I have like three Hardy tractors. Oh yeah. It's, it's, oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I shouldn't have thrown them away. They're but cute I, as hell. I would be in the club. I was in the club as much as all of those other girls back in the day. But you was just in the cut. But they didn't yep. know who I was because I'm chilling in the cut like this, mm-hmm. not you know pushed up and tucked and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I I wrote a poem a long time ago. It's like I'm not a perched little bird. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's beautiful, Miranda. Yes, <laughs> Miranda. Call her Biggie. 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 Yes. You guys are Biggie. friends now. Biggie. Uh, I heard through the grapevine that you worked as an assistant on a film and TV sets for entertainment and executives and celebrities yes what are we talking here i want to know this great i want to know this grapevine you've been hearing things through um what did i do it is true the grapevine is real the grapevine (laughs) is real it is very real what did i do i started as a set pa okay which was super unglamorous i was about to say did that fucking suck yeah (laughs) and it fucking sucked i kind of did until One of the lead actors was coming on to set and there was a little meeting called where we were told how we were to treat this actor. Don't look him in the eyes, da da da, don't talk to him. Okay, okay, and I have to say, being from Los Angeles, having a father who works in the entertainment industry, all of that behavior to me, I had like zero tolerance Mm. for. I think because I, I grew up watching people stroke celebrity ego and I was just like, I'm not down. I'm mm-hmm. not going to do. I don't I didn't see the point. Yeah. And I also remember seeing this person come to set and watching, you know, other PAs kind of scurry away, and I had this thought because I watched him walk down a hallway and I watched two people literally turn their backs and I thought how isolating. What yes. an isolating existence for this person because whether or not this is a rule that they've put out there, they're missing just the normalcy of making eye contact and smiling. Mm -hmm. Hey, like we're here sharing a space, working together. And so I went up to him and I said, hey, welcome to set. My name is Miranda. If you need anything, let me know. And a couple of hours later, I got called in by one of the producers. And You're I was fired! Like, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to get fired. It's fine. I don't really care that much, whatever. And they didn't fire me. They said, so-and-so has actually requested that you remain as his assistant now for the oh! movie. So I was a PA, technically, like it, doing lockups mm-hmm. and like walkie-talkie shit for two weeks. And then when he started, I was just with him for the remainder of the movie. And after having that experience, I was like, I think I would really like to find somebody to work with as a personal assistant individually. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And it just kind of continued from there until Mm -hmm. I um, really did go and get myself fired because I left work to go ride a roller coaster. And Babes, can you ever tell that story in public? Tell it Not with the names. Uh, I'll tell you after. Yeah, yeah. So good. I'll tell you after. I have to to get the tea. So good. What was like your favorite show that you worked on or your favorite movie? Or did they all like, were they all the same? Well, actually, I only worked on three productions, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I was a private, like a, not a private. Personal but, assistant. Yeah, I was okay. a personal assistant. So I was only really on set as an employee. 
actually just two times. Oh, so which period. one was your faves? Um, sorry, it was actually three times. And I think my favorite. I think it would be I did it, I worked in a movie called Gangster Squad. Okay. And I think it would have to be Gangster Squad, even though the movie didn't do well. It was so just like, I've never heard of it, but yeah, it a was lot a, of names. It, dingle nowhere. It was really? a lot of names. It was Ryan Gosling, Emma <gasps> Stone, Josh Brolin, Sean Penn. A lot of and, names. Whoa. And look I, at it now. Can you find it? Yeah. That's no, crazy. it it didn't do very well at all, but I learned a lot mm -hmm. and it was grueling. We shot 73 nights consecutively. So I was basically nocturnal. Wait, 73 nights in a row? Yeah. No days off? Well, we had like Sunday off because Friday always bled into Saturday. Oh my God. Thing. But um, it was, it was intense. It was intense and I learned a lot and I had a great time and we made some cool connections. Mm -hmm. And I used to follow Anthony Mackie around because he loved crafty. Anthony, you loved crafty. <laughs> and we could never find him, mm -hmm. but I could always find him because I was like, He's a crafty. And I have to like run to crafty and go for Mackie. Crafty's important. And, yeah, I appreciate that from him. Crafty's but very important. good humor. Good. It was, it was fun. It was fun. Time. And you also mentioned earlier that you are a doula. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that? So I got into dueling because after working for all of these big babies, aka celebrities, I decided that I was going to go work with real babies, little ones. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, no, I mean, honestly, what happened was I felt somewhat unfulfilled. I've always loved babies. I've always been passionate about women's health and maternal health. And I just decided I was going to start a business. And mm -hmm. I went and I got trained. And did you decide that while you were in New York? Actually, while we were in New York was the first time that I really had thought about it because mm -hmm. there was a birth center called Carriage House Birth, mm -hmm. which was founded by Domino Kirk, who's married to Penn Badgley. If you Ooh, know, I know who Penn Badgley is. Yeah. So Domino, his wife, is a doula and has this business in New York, Carriage House. And I found her to be so cool. And I was like, that feels like my people. Didn't happen. But that was when mm -hmm. the seed kind of was planted, 2016. And then cut to like 2018, I said, OK, I think I'm really going to go and go ahead and do this. Got my certification and started working. Loved it. It's amazing work when you talk about feeling fulfilled mm -hmm. and like you have a purpose it's incredible watching life mm -hmm. come into this world and is all the profound. other things that people don't talk about yes. yeah she showed me some kind of pregnancies i said huh that's what what <laughs> yeah do you feel like, do you feel like <laughs> having like a um like a doula and like a midwife is better than like having like a going a hospital birth no i i don't i think that it's really important for every single birthing person to have the experience that they want to mm -hmm. and they feel the best in. I think that doulas are extremely helpful for certain people. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a one size fit all by any means. But I think that what I have found and I can kind of generalize is that birth has become medicalized. Mm. If you think about a hospital, what a hospital is for is for sick people. It's for medical emergencies. Birth is not a medical emergency. And I think a lot of women now have so much fear around pregnancy and birth because we've shifted the perspective. Ultimately, birth is the most natural thing in the world. Mm. The female body is built to birth. And I part of what I wanted to do as a doula was help women reconnect or discover the trust within their bodies mm -hmm. to believe that they could do this. It's just become such a fear based. Cause like pregnancy is so scary. Like I'm terrified to have a baby, but like, why? I want to get a surrogate. Cause like I could die. You right. <laughs> yeah, like I could you die. Could. Yeah. And he's like, it's could. so, and then like your body changes forever. And then apparently like postpartum after that, after you have the baby, you're depressed. And it's like, it's just like a whole lot. It's also not There's fair. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff, but let's be honest with ourselves. Those ideas that you might have, and mm -hmm. please correct, correct me if I'm wrong. You hear those stories through mm -hmm. media, through this, through that, your parents, what mm -hmm. she went through, but it's not balanced against the beauty yeah. that it is as well. Mm -hmm. So the fear is going to stick more than the beauty. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is scary. There is an entire human coming out of the, an area that's yes. normally very close. That's what I'm saying. But I but think your body can do it. And I think that that's the thing. It's like we have, again, such negative associations with pain. Mm -hmm. Pain usually is an indication that there's something wrong in the body. When you're in labor and you're having contractions, that pain is actually progressive, meaning it's pain with a purpose. And it's actually, 
like you can find a rhythm in it and you can find you a eat. way but you can find a way to tolerate it and mm. it's so much of it is a mental game which again is where i think the work of a doula can become really helpful because a person will reach a point in their labor everyone will where they're like especially if they're choosing to not have medication mm. where they will be like I can't do this, but it's just like running a marathon. It's like you feel like your legs are going to fall off and you feel like you've reached the end, but you go a little bit further and a little, and then you finally reach the finish line. It's like you, it, it can be done. And I, I hope that some of the fear in time for you can dissipate. And let's not forget as well. I mean, at the base and the core of everything, we are animals yeah. on this yeah, planet and every animal does this. Yeah. And we are the only animals that go to a building and have other humans help us mm -hmm. go through it every other every yeah. other species they just go yep and then like we, oh, that's wow. what we've done in general though we think we've we've over analyzed mm -hmm. and over corrected our natural our, ability yeah. yeah yeah that's real so raven mm -hmm. you started acting at three years old 16 months oh <laughs> yes <laughs> Modeling. I see my grapevine isn't as thorough as I thought it was. Modeling commercials. Oh, yeah. you're modeling. I was modeling in commercials. Oh, yeah. period. <laughs> yes. You did, an, you did an interview on the Oprah show when you were three. Mm -hmm. uh, and you talked about how you drove like a little red Corvette. Yeah. Um, when you were three years old and you were living the glitz and glam, did you realize like, damn, like I'm really different from other kids my age? Or did you not like notice it? Um. Okay, so at three... Maybe not so much, but when I did start going to public school. You went to public school? I did. I went to public school from elementary all the way to high school. Really? Yeah. How yeah. big was your class? Oh, I went to public school so in like, Georgia. You, so you was like, you was a celeb though, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, I was a celeb. We'll get into that in a second. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I feel like there's something I'm missing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, we'll talk about it. So I'm going to answer your question, then we'll talk about okay. it. Um, at the very beginning, like me, myself, I know that I'm not different because I have the same struggles and I have a toxic all kinds of shit, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I started going to school and hearing what kids were complaining about and how they didn't listen to their teachers or listen to the authority, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm different because if I don't listen to the director, I'm in trouble. Yes. If I don't listen to my parents, I'm in trouble. So I was always a teacher's pet. And people mm -hmm. were like, ew. I was like, why? They're the adult. Why aren't we listening? I'm confused. Yeah. So I knew stuff that was different then. Now, the reason I give you that really cryptic answer <laughs> was because when I first went to public school in Georgia, I remember my friend like months later saying you know I was afraid to come up to you and I was like why because supposedly they made an announcement saying that I was coming to the school to not ask me see for what an I autograph. mean see what I'm saying Is yeah that, it's that precedent yeah. that gets set yeah don't ask her for an autograph if she comes to you that's fine but don't go to her so mm -hmm. for the longest time I was like I didn't really see what was up and then the you three were black isolated girls, I was isolated and then the three black girls in the school and me it was like four black girls mm -hmm. all together in the school that I went to we were like cool I still talk to two of them. Yeah. And um, the other one, I, I, I know who you are. I haven't seen you in a minute. What up, girl? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And then when I went to high school, I went to a magnet high school, which was the same high school that Usher went to mm -hmm. and a lot of other celebrities went to. So that one was a lot easier. But it was still interesting because it was a mashup of two different cities mm -hmm. in one school. I got bussed in. And then it was also like an inner city school mm -hmm. at the same time. So growing up in the industry of mostly white and mm -hmm. you know all of that then going to a school that had every color in the world i was yeah. like oh this is amazing yeah. this is really cool just learning my footing mm -hmm. in that world while every weekend being on tour with nsync so i had a lot of interesting <laughs> i also, didn't go to i didn't know you went to public school i'm sorry um that's no, okay but how did you balance like going to public school and then working so six months out of the year i would be working and if that was overlapping school uh school year they would send my work to my online to my onset teacher miss mm -hmm. sharon miss sharon Sachs, and i would send the work back when i was out of production i'd go to school and then you just go mm -hmm. to class every day and be like oh this is a bus loved riding the bus that's all i ever wanted to do missed really it. oh my god my parents did not let me ride the bus to elementary school it only started when i was going to uh high school i think like the last year of middle school um Loved it. Mm -hmm. Love going to school. We have that in it. common. Just the bus bit. Oh my God. Growing up in LA, I had never ridden a city bus and I saw them. And it wasn't until 
my grandmother came to visit one year when I was around 11 years old that she said, okay, we can get on the bus. And she took me on the bus from my house in Hancock Park to the farmer's market slash the Grove. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so cool. (laughs) I love the bus. I was so excited by the city bus. And my mom and dad were like, why are you taking her on a bus? They were mortified. Mine was school bus, but I still haven't gone on this. I didn't didn't ride the bus. I never had a school bus at my school. Oh, you didn't. Wait, y'all don't have school buses? No, she went to a fancy ass school. Oh, you went to private school? I went to private school. Oh. Mm-hmm. We have a disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, me too. I'm like, public is bomb. Yeah, oh public God. school is fun. No, though. you guys, growing up in LA, you can't, I mean, you don't go to public school here. Like, the public school system in LA is really Is it bad? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not Where'd good. you grow up? I grew up in Alabama. Oh, yeah, you can go to public school out there. I went to public school in Atlanta. Yeah, okay. Southern schools just have a better yeah. curriculum mm-hmm. back in the day when I was growing up. Nowadays, the curriculums are changing. We're not going to yeah. talk about it. But, like, the camaraderie, the education, mm-hmm. like, I was all, every class that you took, like, I had in my magnet school, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, free, yeah. Free.com. And magnet schools are different than your typical public like, school. Oh, yeah, public yeah, school is school. different than public school. Yeah. Because yeah. magnet school is for the smart kids. Exactly. Well, um, you yeah, were, I think we were all smart. You're you, very you, smart. You had to be smart. You went to a magnet school. No, I went to magnet school for arts, for dancing, singing. Oh, you went Not to, for sciences. Okay. Oh, hell no. I don't know math. You were in there doing a one, two, and choreo. <laughs> exactly. Yes, she exactly. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, Justin Timberlake taught me this <laughs> last weekend. Yeah, I was on tour with NSYNC. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, um... Have you got? Have you seen um, Xena, Girl of the Twenty First Century? Have you seen that? Have you watched it? She didn't watch it. Yes, I have. You saw it? Did I have seen that. I have seen <laughs> Xena. Seen yes. Okay. What did you Ooh. think of it? Did you like it? I think I thought Xena was great. I just don't remember Raven being in it. <laughs> that's, that's that's the thing. You were a main character, were you not? Because my producer, I'm sorry, Devin, I throw you on the bus. He said the same shit this morning. He was like, I didn't, I forgot that Ray was in that. I was like, wasn't she a main character in the movie? I, I was number two on the call. Yeah, that's what I was saying. But were you. the white girl, right? Yeah. Were you in the first one? Immediately, yes. <laughs> and the second one, immediately, yes. Okay. Not the third one, fair, fair, not the third one. But definitely the first two. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I just don't remember you I in think it. That's, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> That's yeah. what I fucking think. Yo, she I mean, come over. Number That's two, she is tomorrow. Number two on the call sheet. That I mean, that means you're like, yeah. She was on the she was on the poster. She was back to back with the white girl with the pigtail. Like there was like it was them. immediately. Yeah. <laughs> It's cool though. It's, what's it's, the, what's it's the, cool though. What's the xenon thing everyone says? Zoom, zoom, zoom. That? That's a song. Mm. That's, you want the song or the the catch? No, race? what's the ca- Cetus Lapidus? Cetus, yes, Cetus Lapidus. Um, Miranda, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's the favorite thing that of Ravens that you've watched that you actually given a, given a look? <laughs> Before watched. me or while she was with me? Both, both. Because I'd like to know. Actually, I don't. I really like that she doesn't know any of my stuff. Like no, you wait, said, it just makes it I easier. I think that this is really... I'm really trying to think if I... I do not think I watched anything and registered... That it was Raven? That it was Raven before we were together. Maybe. But you knew about me. I knew yeah. who you were, but you just like were not on my radar. I just didn't... Is it because she was black? Get out of here, Fanita. <laughs> My God. Hot damn. Every, this is just the internet. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, did you ever watch Hannah Montana? No. Okay. Good job. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Good that job. was a good save. Good, good save. save. Good save. Come on. Great save. Great save. I've actually, save, I've, to this day, I've never seen an episode of Hannah Montana. Don't worry. You're fine. I've never yeah. seen that. Um, I'm telling you, she was watching Sex at the City at like five years old. And but you're I crazy did watch- as fuck. Did your, did your TV not have parental control? <laughs> no. No. That's crazy as hell. I well. also watched a lot of real sex on hbo at double digits yeah. wait i used to watch that when i got older when i was like because they used to have like this uh, hbo used to show like porn yeah they like did. late at night yeah yep. and i would be and then the, what, one thing i love about hbo porn is i couldn't really get caught watching it because it's, it was set up like a tv show yeah yep. and then they would just have crazy ass porn scenes it was yeah. so good it was yeah it was yeah. really good but okay to answer your question though i think that we're old um i i i really i know it's kind of crazy but i really enjoyed college road trip i love that movie yeah and i watched it again recently and i thought it was fun 
That movie was really fun. When I was sick. Aww. When I was sick, I sometimes when I'm sick, I feel really like nostalgic. Mm-hmm. And even though I hadn't seen Cheetah Girls before, <gasps> I was like, I need to watch Cheetah Girls. And then I watched College Road Trip. I think she's having a stroke. <laughs> because Quit. you hadn't seen Cheetah Girls before. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. Speaking I know. of Cheetah Girls. <laughs> You're welcome. You've got to strut like, like you mean it. Free your mind is not enough just to dream it. Come on, come on, get up. I don't know the when rest. you feel it, it's your chance to shine. Strut like you mean it. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, he is all sexed, all assed, don't swim, yo. Wow. Come on, come on, come on. I don't know this part. Like you mean it. Free your mind. Not oh. enough just to dream it. Come on, come on. Get up when you feel it. A chance to shine. Strut like you mean it. Come on, come on, come on. So clearly, I'm Adrian Bailon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I think I give Dorinda. Huh? You know what? I'm gonna stay Galleria. I'm gonna stay right where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I'm gonna stay right there. I always wanted to be uh, I always wanted to be either you or Aqua. Wow, really? Yeah. Interesting. Why Aqua? Because she was just blue and she was the other black girl. <laughs> <laughs> she was the blue girl. We were like the Powerpuff Girls on yeah, really steroids. Were. It's hilarious. But like hilarious. anytime, anytime like me and my friends would do it, I'd always be Galleria though when we sing the song. Fair. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Because Galleria knew what was up. Yeah, it she really was did. So it's so wild to me how deeply impactful that movie what girl like it, what yeah, i know i know and i was pissed like you wanted the third one because the third one had some bobs it wasn't as visually aesthetically pleasing as the other two but the third one was it was cute it was cute i like that one and i like um my, my other song is ready yeah, yeah. uh-huh uh-huh yeah hey, everybody yep wait hold on uh 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 uh, uh. Oh, i forgot the first verse hold on hold on Hit it. Hit the party up. Come. Hit the groove. Celebrate what we're here to do. Grab the music. Now's the time. All of us are here tonight. Top the party up. Going strong. About to do it in all day long. Down the maca. Cheetah girls. Here we go. Gonna rock the world. Party cause you know the future's all yours. Dance your feet. Don't touch the floor. Celebrate the day you're waiting for. Party like you're ready for so much more. Do it like you know it's never been wow. done. Do wow. a little crazy, have too much fun. Today's the day, come on everyone. The party's just begun. I know you're feeling it. Put your hands up if you feel it. I'm feeling it, girl. You know you're feeling it. And then I run up the stairs yeah. and I'm like extremely <laughs> out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you I know, know I've never done a concert like that before. Wait, I was just about to say, Fanita, you need to know that clearly Raven likes you because the fact that she just did that is wild. I am mind blown. I also have FOMO that I don't know what the hell you guys were just singing, number one, number two, whatever. But that's crazy, babe. No, I literally was, I, I literally plotted before. I was like, I have to sing. <laughs> I have to sing. But the fact that she's saying with you is crazy. She, she I was, was literally saying earlier, I was like, I don't think. Uh, like Raven sings her songs. I was like, I don't think she was singing. They're like, I mean, just fuck it, try it. Listen, the joy that she you have right now, here. I'm connected to it. And no, I do not sing that song a lot. I know, I know. Slash oh that was Hold fun. On. I enjoyed it. I'm literally, my, I just had an out of body experience. <laughs> so it looked like it. <laughs> so, that, I love you so much. Oh my God. You know what song I wish I was a part of and I was so jealous every time they sang it, but the girls who sang it were great. La 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 nita na yeah. na na nita e na na nita Oh, I, know, I remember that one. Oh, I mean, you know they finally put um, Cinderella on Spotify? Because it wasn't on Spotify for like years, but like recently, I think like two years ago, they finally put it on Spotify. I don't want to be your Cinderella, sitting in a dark, cold, dusty cellar, waiting for somebody to come and set me free. Oh. Yeah, that was a good one too. But yeah, strut. That was my yeah. That that's my song. That's my I, jam. That's I enjoy song. doing that rehearsal. Like mm-hmm. that was my favorite rehearsal. And I also just want to say thank you to everybody in the social media world for realizing that a thick girl in heels mm-hmm. running through and Barcelona. Little- <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did, girl. She you felt so it. did. I did. I felt it. I was like, these skinny girls. 
girls over here only have to just be cute. I'm yeah, like, I gotta, you are serving. I gotta make it work. You are serving. Oh, thank you and for then recognizing. And shout out uh, to Drew Seeley because he has another one of my songs on Cheetah Girls. Drew Dance for you. Yeah. Dance for you. Yeah, that was a good one. That was that was a good little sexy. Yeah, there was some board. bops. Drew Seeley deserved more clout than Diddy gave him, man. Uh, mm. yeah, there's reasons, but yeah. yeah oh, well, real. Um. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Let's get back to the let's get back yes. to the mm. schedule program, you guys. <laughs> um, so while we were filming That's Arabian, were there other were there other shows on Disney that you were watching that you were like, oh my god, cute. You're not me though, but cute little bitch. Well, obviously that. Yeah. But um, no, I actually did not watch the channel that I was on really? during that At time. All. I was 15 to 18 years old, mm-hmm. and I was probably watching L Word. Um, I was watching Goodness Gracious at that time. I was watching things like that. Mm. I don't really watch a lot of comedies. And I didn't watch kids shows mm. because um, I have my reasons and I'm going to be careful how I say this. My, oh, I was watching a lot of Jim Carrey things. Oh, okay, nice. So I watch a lot of adult comedy, but mm-hmm. not like adult. But, you know, mm-hmm. that's kind of where my brain is. And I felt like I brought that to the stage rather than watching a peer and just copying. Yeah. I know uh, you had some sons on, on <laughs> Disney. <laughs> You got sons everywhere. We're not talking about that. Yeah, but hey. <laughs> I went to one. I was like, let oh. me not Let me not wake this up. Let me just let me like, wake that up. spit it out and just say it's the same. Anyway. Okay, so, well, you just said you didn't watch them, but for the <laughs> of it, because it's on the car. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fair, fair. Since you can't pick your show, uh, what would be your favorite Disney Channel show if you can't pick That's a Raven? Can I pick a movie instead? Yeah, pick, oh, Disney oh, Channel cool. movie. Let's yeah. do a yeah, DCOM. 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 So, my favorite Decom, I always go to this, but it's Smart House. I love that movie. I love okay. Smart House. Smart House is so good, and I love Lucky the Irish. Also, oh. he went on a crazy run. That actor, he went on a crazy run too. But he Smart did. House and Lucky the Irish, yes, mm. love that. And I will bring up one show, and I think I like it because I knew the main character, and he was super sweet, and I'm still cool with Raviv. But uh, Phil of the Future, yeah, I was friends with him, so mm-hmm. I'm gonna choose that show. Uh, that's real of you. Let's talk about the bedroom because you had the most iconic oh Disney God, let's bedroom. Talk about the bedroom. Oh my God, that's okay. What is your what did your real bedroom look like? Like when you had to come home from the set into your room, where you're like, damn. Or did you try to like make your at home bedroom like your one on set? Wow, this is um, how honest do I need to be? This as honest funny. as you want to be. No, I know this is. And we hard. can lie too. Cool, let's lie. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I was living by myself, <laughs> and Whoa. the house that I did all by myself was a platform dark wood bed, mm-hmm. very very masculine. Yeah. Yeah, nowhere near Ravenback. Oh, so you weren't a girly girl like in real life. I've never been. Oh. Never been a girly girl. And also when my mom shows pictures of my old bedroom, I did not design it. It is this pink and that mm. white and flowers. <laughs> and I literally would sit in the room like, kill me. Kill You'd be me. sick in my apartment. Me. My apartment is all pink. I love pink. I'm I love a pink, pink girl. Yeah, pink is so cute. I mean, it's yeah. Sad, it's pink, yeah. You've <laughs> come to love pink though, too. It's a different. I can't yeah. do pink. I can do like, like a blush, like a blush, like mm. a dusty rose. Mm-hmm. Love dusty. Rose. I love dusty. She looks so great. Yeah, she rose. loves me in dusty rose. But um, yeah. Oh, what else does she love the- you in? Mm, oh, you nothing. <laughs> Ooh, literally. literally. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but I will say, so a little story about Raven Baxter's bedroom. For the first few seasons, the bedroom was in the attic. Mm-hmm. Super small. The way we filmed it was so irritating. And I remember when the writers were like, we're going to give Raven the basement. I was so excited. And we had already become a family on mm-hmm. set. The designers, the lighting people and everything. Mm-hmm. So I got to kind of give what a dream bedroom would be for Raven Baxter yes. and living in my best life. And I remember they gave me that swing bed and I, you could not Iconic. find me on set. Like you could not find me. Anthony Mackie's at Crafty. I'm on the bed in mm-hmm. my bedroom just swinging all day long. It was I would have never best. left. I would have started sleeping at the studio. Oh my God. It was fantastic. And then if you notice in that bedroom, Raven Baxter doesn't have a closet. She does it, does it? Oh yeah, she does it. There was it. only one time we got to see Raven Baxter's closet and that was in my music video, mm-hmm. Some Call It Magic. Yeah. And that was the only time you got to see Raven Baxter's closet. Did you ever do input on the wardrobe? Because let's talk about okay. Raven Simone's, uh, Raven Baxter's outfits. Yes, even I to this I still remember day. the fur, the fur jean jacket with the fur on the cuffs, the oh, fur yeah. on the oh, pants. Good. Oh yeah. <gasps> I wish every, I'd have known. Every outfit was a hit. <laughs> I wish I'd have known I'd have brought you one of the dolls. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can find. I gotta dust it off. Um, yeah, every outfit was a collaboration between me and the wardrobe mm-hmm. at the time, and then Miss Nancy Butts Martin, who is still the wardrobe designer on the shows that mm-hmm. I work with on Disney, and I still talk about how to create beautiful things. But back in the day, my size, mm-hmm. my shape, they didn't really have yep. a lot of clothes, so it was really a constant conversation, yes. and it was so much fun. Those who know, Parasuko jeans started mm-hmm. it off, and then we started going into really cool two-piece outfits. Yes. It was just fun. Because I remember watching, uh, you know, I watched That's All Raven, I also watched The Cutie Girls, and I remember being pissed, like, with the wardrobe situation on The Cutie Girls, because, like, I guess, like, when I was a kid, I didn't really understand why they would have you dress so much differently than the other girls, and then, you know, the fucking fat phobia in the early 2000s yeah, was, was bad. fucking rampant. Yeah, it was Like, bad. they had us convinced that you were fat, which is... Yeah crazy as fuck but I, I was really saying to my manager earlier I was like they had me pissed off in the cute girls so they had you dressed like the manager yeah like they always yeah. had you on like a long sleeve with a, with a boot yeah. and everybody got to have a little skippy ass outfits don't ever have me pissed off like that again Ooh. little bitch Ooh. cause did y'all and then it's also like Ooh. it's on the same fucking channel like you were dressing completely different you know what let me not let me but not do it, too much. don't don't be mad at Disney it's also a collaboration of the people behind the scenes yeah. and like the brand management of who I was at the time and like mm-hmm. you said during the early 20s like you can call someone fat and not be called a bully. Yes. You yeah. can say, oh, you must be pregnant mm-hmm. by Omarion's baby. And I'm like, no, I just ate too much in and out today yeah. because I'm depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, but no one really cared. <laughs> yeah. You know Nobody what I mean? Gave- Nobody cared. And so, yes, mm-hmm. yes, I felt that too. Mm-hmm. But I, at the same time, I'm also the person even to this day where I like don't like to show, like I don't really like bathing suits. I don't show yeah. my body. And I guess that's coming from that time period and mm-hmm. just how the people around me were like, you're fat, you can't wear that. Or you're short and you're too fat, so you have to put on extra heels. Like at the age of thir- 14, I was wearing Thick ones, yeah. Yeah. big old heels because it makes you look skinnier. And mm-hmm. so... To this day, I'm like, I don't want to put on a heel and I wear a hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just easier that way. I think if Raven Baxter was like a real person in 2024, she'd be an, a TikTok icon it girl. Immediately. Yeah. Like she'd be a f- it girl. Oh, yeah. She'd be all over TikTok. Um, so how does it feel having Raven's home? You know, it's very, very... Um pleasurable and humbling to be able to help other kids that want to be in the industry Mm -hmm. and who watched the show and are willing to take my shit (laughs) if you ever need somebody to guest star as like a teacher yeah got it let's go i'll get i'll guest star as a cousin or something (laughs) i'm gonna actually call you to that no for real i'm just i'm what (laughs) do you know biggie not everything is about you let a black woman have something okay you already are married to her can i have something like, I'm not trying to go back and forth with you about this. Like, let me win at something. Okay, you get to be a teacher for okay. sure. I'm just saying that I'm married to her and I've been asking to just be a background person. And she's like, you can go to central casting. There's, I was there's, like, there's, nepotism there's be, doesn't run in my family. Saying. It doesn't that's run in my family. Haven't you had like, enough? You, 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 come on, you grew up in LA, you went to private school. You clearly grew up Is rich. it because I'm white? I mean, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> like, let, like, let something be about me for a change. Um, You're so f***ing selfish. I know. Oh, I'm babes. trying. She really is fantastic. Selfish. She's not selfish. She does like that nepotism, though. <laughs> Hey. I love nepotism though. I don't, she loves I don't it, and I'm ashamed mind of it. nepotism. They shouldn't be. I don't think. Who were we with the other day? Who was literally telling us it was someone famous who was saying that they Tammy Roman. Yes, Tammy Roman. Tammy was saying to us that she is down with giving her kids access in. Yeah. And here's the deal, and this is what I will say. So. I'm not really a nepo baby. She's not. Okay. No, but I had I like mean, no. I'm not though producer because or producer. Did you have a pool at your house growing up? No, I didn't. Did I you did. have stairs in your house? I oh, I didn't. I didn't have a pool. Uh, no, my parents didn't like water. But um, was your house two stories? Yes. Did you have your own bedroom the whole time you were a kid? <laughs> She's a mess. Don't answer. So you plead the fifth. Don't do it, <laughs> babes. I hear it coming. Don't do it. I'm well, telling I can't, you. I'm I don't you right like now. to lie. <laughs> you don't have to lie. Like, <laughs> not say it. It's not snitching. Don't snitch. I had a bedroom and a playroom, and I had a little room that I could also hang out. I'm just kidding. I was about to say, uh, oh my god. I was kidding. I uh, <laughs> kidding. I was very rich. I, was, I had a library. <gasps> She oh, had an au pair. Oh. I, yeah, we didn't have you nannies. You had foyer? Oh, I yes. Foyer. We had a foyer. Wait, did you really remember? Yeah. Oh, shit. You were rich. She was f- rich. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> she was making, oh, she was on the Cosby show at three years old making millions of dollars. She's Listen, the I had fucking a basement. richest person. <laughs> Damn. Okay. 
But um And to think I thought we was one of the same. Oh, no. Damn. You and I are probably closer to the same. I have uncles from Alabama, okay? <laughs> We're closer. Oh, my um, God, I love this. But here's what I was trying to say is that I believe that helping your Others. people out if you can is mm -hmm. great. Like my dad helped me get my first job and I wouldn't have probably have gotten otherwise, yeah. but I had to prove myself. That's the thing. Like once I had it, like my dad was like, I'll open the door for you, but you have to then do the work mm -hmm. to have the people want to keep you in the room. And I'm also, I'm kind of on that, but I'm also very not like, I went through a lot of shit to get to where I got yeah. to. And, and I love, I know I'm going to love my kids, but I'm not going to just automatically put them in something. Like I want to see them do their version of a grind. They don't mm -hmm. have to go through the 40 blocks walking in a, you know, a stroller and mm -hmm. my mom making beanie weenies at night because she, we're trying to get on the Cosby show. Yeah. But I'm also not going to walk you into a casting director that I've had a 30 year relationship with. Yeah. Like I'm going to walk you into a casting director that I don't know because you deserve to be criticized mm -hmm. as much as I was. <laughs> You're kind of evil. <laughs> but, you know, I told you I but you know what? You I know what? You. I think it's all relative to, to, to certain industries. Because here, yeah. think of it this way. Yeah. <clears throat> The only conversation that this really ends up being around is, is if Hollywood. You just get, um, no, no, no. If you is, get offered the role or not. Is Hollywood. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the only time that this people. This is true. No, so, no, no. Yes, because think about other industries. Think of like if your father was a really, or your mother was a really big time lawyer and had their own law firm and you grew up and you wanted to be a lawyer and your parent was like, okay, come work in my law firm. You don't hear people talking about it. Maybe within that pocket. Oh, I people, see what you're saying. That is but true. I'm just saying like people demonize it so much in Hollywood and I, or make it this negative thing. I, and I have to counter, babe. I have to stop you right there because you're make lawyers are really high end meaning you have to pass a bar to be one. But if you have somebody that has a Fortune 500 company, let's not forget the show Succession, and you have a son that's never been to business school, but you know that you have to make him good, you're going to make him CFO. And then no, he's going to have to learn I think the that's the issue, though. This is, what I, I, this is where I think we're disagreeing. Yeah. If, okay, like I told my father from a very young age, I knew I wanted to work in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Literally like five years old. My happiest place was coming to visit him on the Warner Brothers lot. It was the only place I wanted to be. Whenever I thought about what I was going to do when I was growing up, it was there. He saw that in me my entire life. He witnessed that. So when I got to an age where I could have an internship, I came to him. I said, I would like to have an internship. Can you help me get one? He's like, well, I'll connect you with this person at the studio who is the handles mm -hmm. the internship. Like, I got that connection, but that's then I a had beautiful to, connection, though. right? But that's all I'm. That's, that's all I, I'm that's, ever talking that's about. That's the kind of thing like you see the passion in your child's yeah, eyes, exactly. and you go. Then there's the nepotism <clears throat> that I'm talking about, where it's like my child's a fuck up, and I have just to give them a job, a yeah, and exactly. I have this situation, and now it's there, and that's where the nepo baby, I think, negative part comes mm -hmm. in because Maybe. Jamie Lee Curtis. She did her time. Yeah. She got in that industry and she worked just as hard. And a lot of the people in the industry have the passion because their parents have that. I just think if you're going to be like success like if you're Gwyneth Paltrow had to work really hard exactly. like maybe mm -hmm. her parents said her but you have to work Blue Ivy if she's gonna go like pursue a yeah, career probably because like, she is Beyonce's daughter so they're gonna give her a real hard time yes. yeah I mean she's already getting it she already yeah, got so yes, much yes, flack she for so much hate perf yeah but even just the, her performance what's well, right? called full out what those who are the dance, those who are in dance. Oh, the full out, yeah. It's called, I'm gonna need you to go full out. Oh, well, but if you think about it even that way, right? It, when she it. was on that tour. When like she, the first time she danced, it was horrible. But she got better. Yes, she did. And she and, got better over and time. And she, she took kept, the yeah. criticism and she kept going and then she went full out. I think, yeah, exactly. I think that's another thing. I don't know where this conversation is going, but I just want to say I this. don't either, but I'm loving I'm it. Talking, I'm talking about We're just having it. It's also the thing of in the industry that we're in, it's not about the talent anymore. It's about how you can handle the criticism. Yes. <laughs> it's like how yes. well you can rise above. That's why, that's why I try to tell people that want to do like social media, like you got to have a thick skin because people are going to hate you. They're so going to hate and you. If they, if they like you, they're only going to like you for a week and they will turn on and you. And they will turn on you no matter how famous you are. And I learned I have very thick skin at a very young age mm -hmm. because of what I went through and it's gotten better surprisingly because you get to see the love as well mm -hmm. right after but like i grew up in the perez hilton world yeah i grew up in like a whole tabloids all that shit. it was really it mean. was really how bad do you deal, how do you deal with the hate um i just know that like the people that are talking about me aren't doing shit with their lives yeah, like you you you're seeing me i will never see you in my lifetime 
Like I will, you will never come across my for you page. Right. And you're taking time out of your lame ass, uninteresting day to comment on a bad bitch. And <laughs> I would too, if I was not me, you know what I mean? Right. Has there ever been Fair. anything that has really gotten to you? Yes. When I first, when I first started social media. So like I used to be, uh, like overweight, I've lost like 150 pounds, Congrats. but I like in my friends, in my friend group, like nobody ever said anything about my weight. Like, nobody ever, like, really commented on my weight until I got on the internet. And I was like, mm. oh, my God, I am obese. Yeah. And, like, that used to, like, hurt my feelings. Like, <clears throat> I remember I had, like, my first ever, like, super viral video. Uh, I was making a joke, and I was saying that, like, guys who wear, like, uh, tank tops and shorts and some are slutty. Like, that's, like, a slut outfit or whatever. Really, really funny. Really funny joke. It was hilarious. That video did so well. And I just remember, like, all the comments being, like, like, they were, like, calling me, like, a man and, like, mm. like you know what I'm saying, calling me fat and all this other shit. Like, we don't want you to say shit about us. But you know what's crazy is in that video, I had, like, hot guys started, like, stitching it in, like, the description that I was wearing. And then their videos are going viral. Then all of a sudden, everybody was like, oh, my God, she's actually funny. Like, and it's like, oh, until a hot guy cosigns with the, yeah. um, the fuck I'm saying. Now it's like, but... Yeah, we we were so talking exhausting. we were talking to actually a 19 year old girl today mm -hmm. and we asked her about just her success and what's going on and she said i knew that i was doing well when people started hating on me yeah. you're here's the thing name a bitch that don't get hated on like you're not that bitch if you're not getting hated on <laughs> immediately because like, nobody wants to be you and they're not envious of you exactly. and you need people to be envious if of you. everybody loves you you're not that girl i'm yeah. so sorry like that's just the truth i agree and i feel like my experience with that has been that the only times that i really get irked is when somebody will find something that i am particularly insecure about myself. Like mm -hmm. there are certain things that I'll like see in my face mm -hmm. that most people won't notice, but I will. And then if there, one person happens to notice it and they comment it, I'm like, oh, okay, that got me. And then the other reaction that I have to certain things is sometimes I get angry at the stupidity. Yes. Or That's like just, the, or like the fucking conspiracy theories that you see yes. unfold. Like, where did you get this narrative? Are you, do you have a camera in my house? Where did you, <laughs> where did you find this yeah. information? Who told you this? And yeah. how bold people are in their belief in what they're saying is true. Yes. Like their perception is really reality. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you don't know me at yet all. The, this whole thing just happened where people, thought that I was putting my period blood in Raven's food. What? And I was- Are you still doing roots? <laughs> <laughs> you were doing roots, Vicky! Dead. Dead. No. Dead. 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 Raven got roots on her. Dead. Oh, uh, you know what roots are, Vicky? No. It's like, a, it's like a Southern like witchcraft thing, but basically that's like, like a love spell. That's no, where, yeah, that's yeah, where it I came what from. It is. Yeah. That's, that's what I said. But this is the thing. That's, that's the, what I've said. That's where it came. Yeah. That is where it came from. I understand. Sorry, I thought you were referring to like Roots, the mini series. The slavery show? Yeah. Why did your mind immediately go to that? Well, <laughs> my dad produced it. So oh. I was like, Roots. And then she kind of got me. Fuck it. She just got you. I though. can't gag her back. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say. <laughs> she got you. Though. You, she you can't. You did. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, oh okay, she's, sure. Now she's getting smart. And then, yeah, right. And let me readjust my position Ooh. here. Um, no, but let me tell you. So people start saying this, and they're oh, so God. adamant, and they're telling me that the only reason that Raven loves me, and then they're calling me a witch, and then they're, and this whole thing just goes crazy, and I was like. You guys, I have never put my period blood in anything. We're debunking ever. it right here. Like, I mean, I debunked it before, but I was just Wait, like, where did the rumor stem from? Where did it come from? I said, it's, her fault. it's my fault. Okay. So, um, most I, of the hate that happens about I love me, the by accountability. Way, is my fault. Oh, I'll I mean, it. <laughs> most of the hate that happens regarding me is your fault. I love you. Okay, so <laughs> I had a I had a boyfriend, mm -hmm. and that boyfriend was not from this country, and he said hey, I know you're black. Is it true that this is what people do? <laughs> okay. And I was like, no, crazy guys question. <laughs> exactly. I was like, that's a wives tale or whatever and whatnot. And that was like a joke. So I said it on the Howie Mandel show um, saying that, I don't even know exactly what I said. But I, I was wasn't there. I don't know. But Raven said something about it. They were making a joke and then they prank called me. Mm -hmm. And Howie was like, hey, Miranda, I was literally in the middle of working out. My phone rings. And I'm like, oh, this is funny. She 
was supposed to be on a mm-hmm. podcast that was really fast. Hey, babe. And then I hear, hey, it's Howie. And I was like, all right, you're Great live imitation. on the air. Yeah, it doesn't sound like him at all. Oh, it's <laughs> Howie. <laughs> and he was basically like so is it true that you put your period blood in raven's food and i was like "Ah, howie no one's ever asked me that before yeah all the time clearly that's a joke yeah i had no idea that's another thing i've realized too on the internet especially since i make comedy you can't joke some people don't understand satire they don't don't. like a lot of people take literally things i say verbatim and it can be like the most crazy thing like oh yeah like i eat my period blood for breakfast yeah and like, be clearly like, that's not true yeah. that's not true because uh no but at the same time let me say to the generation that is not getting it they themselves are trying to be funny yes slash they themselves need attention yes slash we are in such a snowflake type of world mm-hmm. that we grew up on eddie murphy we grew up on richard well i grew up on richard Pryor mm-hmm. and all of those things and it's like we know what that is because it's in our world. Yeah. As comedy waters down, mm-hmm. we're missing those cues. And to it also, get it. it'll, it'll be the people that are always like, oh, we can't even joke anymore. But y'all are also the same people that cannot take a joke. Yeah. Like, y'all trying to pick apart every single joke. Like, nobody can say anything. And then it's like when somebody finally does say something like off the cuff, you want to cancel them for it. And whether, and it's also like whether or not what they said was, I guess, wrong. But sometimes it's like, you just didn't like what they said. Like, I got canceled one time because I said, I think people are ugly. Like, that's mm, not wrong to say. I'm going to co-sign. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes people just, are ugly. Yeah, and like, people, I got, you would have thought I, I punched a baby in the face. Like, they were jumping me bad. Oh, I've been through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's there was, why, there was, that's... There was get, I was getting my lashes. And like, they were like, everybody's beautiful, but you're ugly for saying that people are ugly. People don't even and understand it, how hypocritical they are. Exactly. That's the thing, too. It's like, Y'all just, if somebody says something that you don't even necessarily just don't like, you will have a problem with it. Like whether or not, if it's, and, if it's funny or not. You know and what I mean? challenge them to look through their entire life of what they yep. said. Yes. And say if they, you know, never said anything that would have offended someone ish or for dramatic effect mm-hmm. slash just because I'm in this open arena. Yeah. I'm gonna get backlash. If for I it. started going through every user one two three's Twitter account oh my on my board day and scrolling down to two thousand, because what I hate about the internet is I hate fake self righteousness. Ooh, I hate people who are fake self righteous. There like, it is. I have never said anything bad about anybody. I want to sit around the campfire and kumbaya. You're lying. We're all we are the world. <laughs> like you guys don't think that. You guys don't act like that. You guys mm-hmm. are mean to people that are different than you. Yep. You guys think evil things. You guys do evil things. You guys say evil things. You guys laugh about your friends behind their back in your group chats. Immediately. You guys pick apart people's appearances, their their lives on the internet, on social mm-hmm. media. You say nasty, rude things to people that you don't know. And mm-hmm. y'all expect me to believe that if I didn't have a camera recording every aspect of your life, I wouldn't catch your ass in some shit? Immediately, yes. Immediately. Well, it's also just the human condition. But yes. I think the thing that I find also so frustrating is people just can't be honest. Mm-hmm. Slash, people can't take constructive criticism or understand learning opportunity meaning i think that cancel culture is a little bit unfortunate because when somebody comes from a good place and they are saying something out of lack of education or just not having that experience but then there's an opportunity for a teaching moment but people are so quick to just squash people that also to me is really disappointing and i feel like it takes out like authenticity in conversations Mm because even earlier you you were talking about something you're like i'm trying to work this right because you know how it, it gets and it's like, yeah. damn, we've really come to a place where every sentence we say, there has to be an immediate disclaimer that yeah. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not trying to say the wrong thing. Like I'm trying. And it's like, it takes out the authenticity, authenticity of having like a real conversation with a real person. And isn't that the the hashtag word for this entire generation? Authenticity. But then yes. I'm being authentic. I'm being authentic. Authentic. If you're being authentic. I'm being authentic yeah. and then I can't say what's actually on my mind. Mm-hmm. And if I do say it and you disagree, let me explain it mm-hmm. so that you see where I'm coming from. But that's what but my show bottoms up. I say whatever the fuck I want. As and you should. I don't change anything now because it's like people are going to have a problem no matter what I say. Yeah. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it for bitches I don't give a fuck about. So if you tune into my show and you don't like me, tune the fuck off. Because I'm going to talk the way I want to talk and say what I want to say. But you also are your own boss. I work for a conglomerate. (laughs) I was also going to say, though, I think that there's a time and a place for for that. Like on your show, it's your show. Mm -hmm. You're going to say what you want. You have the platform to do so. I think that part of what has also happened is that everyone thinks that 
their opinion is worth sharing. And mm-hmm. not all opinions need to be shared. That is, that's tea. And there's also a huge difference between somebody saying, oh yeah, I like it. Why do you like it? Because it's good. No, you know, it's a, for something to be good, to really be good, you have to understand the structure and the format that made that thing good. Yes. You liking it doesn't make it good. Mm-hmm. Like is an opinion that you have the right to as an individual. But what really makes something good, especially when you're talking about film, mm-hmm. there is, you need to think about casting, music, nuance of l- lighting, how it's directed, the structural formation and foundation of what makes it good so is if then someone, the conversation. So if, if someone I, is giving their opinion, so if someone is giving their opinion, I need to hear they understand the foundation. Mm-hmm. And then that's why I care about your opinion. Yes. Yes. If you're just saying, I like it, here's my opinion, I'm not going to listen to you mm-hmm. and you don't matter. But oh, if you're true. like, well, but I wasn't really. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying that. But like for you, this is your job. Mm-hmm. This is what you do. This is what you know. You have your foundation in it. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I'm listening to you. Yeah. And when someone is coming up in the ranks as a baby, you, mm-hmm. you, that person has to work hard to gain my trust for mm-hmm. them to for me to want their opinion yeah and that's what i hear you saying it's like you can start saying that but then also learn the logistics behind it of why you matter and why your voice matters yeah and it's just also what frustrates me about people and their Mm self-righteousness and their ability their their willy-nilly belief that they can just say whatever they want without really understanding the impact or if they were going to say it in a way that meant something yeah. to have to have the education or backing behind it yeah. to whatever. And just to say to like, I feel like people just don't understand that we are actually real people. Like, yeah. you know, like we are human beings. Yeah, we are. And, and what, what this backward ass, cause I, you know, I'm younger. So I'm in like the, the Gen Z yeah, generation yeah. and y'all be irking the f- out of me, <laughs> but it's like, everybody preaches to be kind to everyone but y'all continuously cyber bully anybody you get the chance to. Ooh. And it I, it just doesn't compete. That sounds fake. Yeah. It sounds it's it sounds real fake. And a lot it of you bitches fake. is fake. And a lot of you all is fake. It fake. But that's the that's that on that. Um and that's that on Raven. Just kidding. The show's not over yet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about a dream is a wish your heart makes. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Sing that. Sing that. Oh my show. god. Wow. That's um, musical today. What do you what do you remember about the shoot? And what did you enjoy? Okay, wow. Okay. The shoot. I walked on set and I said, I am the oldest bitch here. <laughs> <laughs> that was with Zach and Cody and them, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was I was grandma on that set. Um, I remember that the hot comb wasn't working as well. The flat iron did not work as well. Okay. You noticed that in the video. The hair was kind of thick, thick. Wasn't mm-hmm. wasn't so The roots was up. The yeah. roots were up. Yep. We played it off though. Yeah. We played it off. Um and again, I was very self-conscious about my body during that video. I was mm. like, again, kind of like my shirt's too tight. I Bro, so I hate that. I hate that they they like did that to you. No, 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 they didn't do it to me. Well, they I know that they didn't. Just... I'm just mean like the industry, society, yeah, like society, all of it. Because yeah. I know like your body. When I was younger, like I remember like your body always being like the topic of conversation, and yeah. people always mm-hmm. making it seem like you were just like. 800 pounds and it like to this day it still pisses me off because you were so pretty and so beautiful and so talented and it just sucks that like as society gets older and we get older like body image gets harped on even more because i thought for a second there we were like leaving like the the thin era but i feel society slowly falling back back into being thin i i was talking to somebody the other day she's in her early 20s and she was like i'm trying to be thick and I said what she was like you know skinny thick like I'm trying to be and I said you want to be thick mm-hmm. she was like yeah I need hips and I asked him like oh you want injection do you yes. want that I'm like you don't you're not naturally that way so you're not really gonna like eat mm-hmm. three meals in one yeah. sitting <laughs> <laughs> yeah get there on. I'll show you how to get there girl wait Mickey, just out of curiosity this ain't on the, this ain't on the cards what do you like to eat oh gosh ass? did you say ass did I <laughs> Why are you coming I will, for I will me? confess. No, she doesn't. Oh my God. She doesn't. Do no. you? Somebody point me to the best ass eater. <laughs> Hilarious. No. <laughs> okay, seriously. What do, you, what do you eat in a day? What do I eat in a day? I have protein shakes. I love sweet potatoes. Okay. Sweet potatoes are like one of my favorite Purple. things. Purple sweet potatoes. Um, I'm a really 
Are you I, vegan? No, I'm not. But I have a history of eating disorder, and I'm now very particular about my foods. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like a willy-nilly, I'll eat whatever type of girl. I'm pretty regimented. Yeah. But protein shake, purple sweet potatoes. I do a, salad. a big salad. I like turkey, ground turkey, mm -hmm. um, like taco salad -y type yeah. things. Um, sauerkraut peanut butter peanut okay so butter. i don't think i'd ever eat anything at your house um, oh, oh no, no. You let me would. tell you something oh y'all cook she oh, yeah. cooks i only cook wait wait biggie have something made for me when i come feel the podcast tomorrow have, okay. have me a little have me done a little what lunch. you want okay Whatever. you eat spaghetti sauce yes i love spaghetti you i like love it pasta roots? i've never had it like that wait oh <laughs> she's, she's like so sweet. you want to eat my period blood i mean you're I be in love with now, you, baby. here's the deal you're gonna leave that new boyfriend of yours real fast after, after you eat this meal he tomorrow thinks, every sorry time I make spaghetti, he thinks i have my period blood in it well there you but go but he would eat it if he, he would eat it fully knowing i have my period blood. no here's the deal yeah. I, oh, that's that's i'm a really good cook no, i will I take that for sure fantastic. and that's why she married me and i'll do no i'll shame. do a review and i'll let everybody know if it was good or not oh that. Okay. Um, I guess we gotta go. I gotta go to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, please. You ain't gotta do. Don't do time fast. I'll take a sandwich. Um, no, you gonna we gonna make you some no. pasta. It's delicious. Pasta and lobster. Y'all know that's my fave. Oh, you like pasta and lobster too? Yeah. Cause she's your pasta and lobster. <laughs> She got a right girl on her roster. She be feeding her pasta and lobster. Yeah. She get me up on Tuesday. Like, what you doing, babe? Let me take you shopping. Oh. Can I say, well, babe, I'm a little bit. That's that's Callie's song. That's not me. I'm not. That that's not. That was don't. fire though. It's, it's, <laughs> she's good. Her song, she yeah, she's good. Fire. She's that. also been a guest on Bottoms Up. Nice, Callie. She we actually look alike. We're twins. I'll take it. So, what, which one do you per, prefer? A dream? Is it should we make parties <laughs> or? <laughs> 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 So here's the deal. Da -da 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 I sure do. Da -da 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 um, uh, I prefer Circle of Life yeah. because that you was just the, watched that. I literally just watched That's it. So funny. I prefer Circle of Life for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. One, let's just go back to the toxic lifestyle. My body was fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then yeah. I was juicy right. down. Yeah. And that was like a specialty juicy mm -hmm. outfit. Anyway. It was a pink one, right? Yeah, it was the pink yeah. like tie dye. And then I just remember walking on set with my crew, and I'm just looking around like I'm that bitch. I'm that bitch. Like, <laughs> I was just like, wait, wait, not giving ever, grandma. I, I don't know. I no, feel like if I was, I was you, I'd walk on set like, hey, this is cute. Where you that? <laughs> mm. oh, I love this. I love your shoes. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I be because like at this point you had to be like in your diva era. Like I'm low key better than all of you. I didn't say low key better, but in my head I was like. I I've been on this. TV for a very long yeah. time. And yes, you guys have had success too. But like, I've been here <clears> for a really yeah. long time. And it feels good to be around a group of people that are my peers. But I still feel older than mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. and work. But I didn't feel like I was better than anyone. You know, Hillary, um, oh my goodness, Taj, everybody was mm -hmm. on set. We were all so cool. But it was a little bit like, y'all don't even know when this show airs. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't even know what you're about to come into. This is but yeah, it was, it was crazy. Okay, so Miranda, Raven, do you guys think that you give good advice? Yes! yes. Now yes. it's time for my favorite segment <laughs> with my pussy colored phone. <laughs> it's time for Fanita's Fan Fiction! Ow, where yo. you guys call in and I try to give you the best advice I can, girl. <clears throat> Hello! Hey, Fanita, it's your boy D to the O to the N to the A to the L to the D. Uh, I just want to say that you are doing the thing, and I look up to you every single day, and you are really defying all the odds through our everyday life. But my question is for Raven Simone. Oh. Uh, my question is, do you talk to yourself on a regular basis? And that's mostly it. I love y'all. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. First of all, you know, I don't spell that well. What was his name? D Donald. Donald. D, D to, to the O, o to, to the N, N to the D yeah. to the O. You can't spell D to the O to the N to the A to the L to the D. Mm. Donald. Oh, good Period. job. Good job. Um, the question was, do I talk I went to, to a myself? private school. Oh, you think you're, are you an elitist, Biggie? <laughs> I'm just letting you guys Did you know. just talk down to me because I had to go to public school with the regular kids? You couldn't spell Donald. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I say nothing <laughs> to this side of the room, okay? <laughs> I don't know anything about anything, but... <laughs> I, first of all, I didn't have enough time, and Raven was also spelling it at the same time, so I just gave up because I thought she had it. It's oh, not like I can't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I 
know this way you do it. I just totally don't feel Donald if I had enough time. It's okay. Okay. Look at her. She's so. Uh, oh my God, y'all. She just ate me off. <laughs> she just gagged me. Fuck. She's just her second time gagging me. It's okay. I anyway. love her. Okay. Donald. I have tears in my eyes. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, do I speak to myself? Yes. I speak to myself to pump myself up, to mm -hmm. remind myself that I'm amazing. I speak to myself when other people are getting on my nerves and to remind myself that I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I speak to myself when other people are getting on my nerves and I know that they're wrong and I'm going to say, you know what? You're, you got this. You're right. Just let them, let them think that they're wrong and let them do it. And then you will come and save the day. Like I have that mm -hmm. type of mentality because of the industry that I live in. Um, I talk to myself when somebody comes at me negatively about me. I have to talk myself up then. So yes, I have a constant dialogue in my head of self-esteem that cannot be matched. Even my wife is like, do you have any? What, what, like, No, I just, as somebody who's struggled with a lot of insecurity mm -hmm. and a lot of self-esteem and self-confidence issues and physical appearance issues, sometimes I'll look at Raven and I'm like, do you ever feel and she's like no I'm bomb and just I'm like wow and I have to say I think that that is something that black women mm -hmm. really embody and it's something I've often been in awe of and admired even sitting here with you mm -hmm. the amount of like positive affirmation you give yourself even in a joking manner yeah it is it's still <laughs> like you'll do it with jokes but you're positively affirming yourself mm -hmm. as you do that and I've realized like the difference in me is that I am very self-deprecating. So, do you feel like it makes you awkward to compliment yourself? No, it doesn't feel truthful. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, the only that times that, that I like- Because you're so, you're so It hurts gorgeous. my heart when I hear these things come out of her mouth and it, it, it kind of irks me because I just- I, It will piss me off daily. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. She gets irritated and then she has to talk to herself and remind herself she's amazing, <laughs> as we've just this learned. This is very true. Um, no, but, I mean, I will pat myself on the back when I truly understand or believe or- think that I've done something that's good but it's hard it's hard for, I don't know I just mm -hmm. I'm fucked up and I think you're right it does come with our culture like we have we to, have to be this way yeah. we have to be this way because yeah. the entire world is out to get yes. us everybody hates us <laughs> everybody hates us and we have to be our own like cheerleaders yes. and we have to be our biggest fans because nobody else wants to see us in positions like this this mm -hmm. is very true so it's like and I'm also gonna say everybody hates white people too because of all yeah. the shit that has happened over the yeah. years yeah. so I think in that world that understanding it's, you have to yeah. build yourself back it's up again it's so interesting because from my perspective i i get that i understand mm -hmm. that like america hasn't been a safe space for black people mm -hmm. like I, that's a kind way of putting it I'm, yeah. well i'm just trying that is, I'm trying that to is get, very kind i'm very not kind trying way. to get all deep into it yeah. but yeah. it's like i think like just for as an outsider i look at black people today and i think that you guys are like amazing. It's Wait, just like you're right, that, though. You're right. Hold that yeah. thought. Hold that thought, Biggie. I had one last question. I forgot. To ask you. <laughs> black people are amazing, babes. I know. What is you your opinion something. about black people? <laughs> <laughs> Don't and that, thank babe. you so much for <laughs> having. Here's all I'm going to tell you. This is my opinion. I, I love you. I have I been, love you. I I have been you. invited to the cookout. Oh. Every. Uh, yeah. She has. She's eating mac and cheese and ribs. <laughs> so I'm just saying that. Wait, no. But no, you look, we're no. almost the same color. <laughs> she doesn't eat it. She doesn't eat it. She yeah. just got invited. Oh, oh, okay. Look, we're just three different shades yeah, of black. Look. Right here. There you yeah. go. Cocoa butter, caramel, and chocolate. Yeah. Beautiful. I we love all people. the world. <laughs> I love we you. We are. Yeah. You're funny. <laughs> it's a circle of life. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> wait, just kidding, guys. Biggie does like out. black people. And if she doesn't oh like black God. people, she likes her black wife. <laughs> That's I can't speak one. for all blacks, but I can't speak for this one. <laughs> Raven, it's your turn. My turn? Oh, I need you to can, do it you too. Can phone. Yeah. Don't. She's eating the pussy phone. Oh. No, I wasn't. I mean, you smell it a little bit. It doesn't smell like you're a freak. Oh my god. Candy. I know y'all sex nasty as fuck, ain't it? <laughs> it's nasty as fuck, ain't it? Candy. Yeah. Hello? Okay, Sunita. So, um, Sunita, Raven, Miranda, Young Nat, whoever. Um, <laughs> who was y'all celebrity crush? Like, when y'all were like teenagers, like kids? Who were, who was y'all celebrity crush? Like, who did y'all 
Mm-hmm. Literally. Okay, girl, we get it. Gas. We can cut, cut, the, cut the tape off. She just said the same thing eight times. Cut the tape. Love you, though. So love you with all my heart. Love you with all my heart. I have a short attention span. Um, mine was light skin, baby daddy, Corbin Blue. Oh. He was the love of my life and, like, literally the only black guy on Disney, so. Yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah, so your turn. Let her go. Let her Tyrese. Oh, damn. <laughs> that is, I'm sorry, that is. That is so fucking funny. Oh, I think that is for you to say Tyrese of all people. There you I'm go. telling you, Biggie finds ways to just get in there. That's, that's why I love her. Yo. That's She's funny crazy. as hell. Tyrese is actually hilarious. Okay, wait, wait, wait why Tyrese? He was just he's like fine a, as fuck. Yeah, he did look good. Especially like in Baby Boy and in the Fast and Furious Yes. Movies, you know, oh, my God. Was, you know, the first time Tyrese got off the bus, he landed on the Hang with Mr. Cooper set. Mm. Catch that. He was on the Pepsi or Coca-Cola bus. And then he got off and got right onto Hang with Mr. Cooper. So I met him before he became famous. That was interesting. Dang. Mm. Very interesting. Um, You guys, I had two crushes. I had two crushes. One was Janet Jackson. <sighs> Yeah. And the other one was Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two beautiful women. I love that. Yeah. Miranda, your turn. Hello, hello. Does it feel like you're touching yourself? <laughs> it does. <laughs> so wild. Oh, you say that oh my God, she's hilarious. I'm sorry. I'm just zinging them. Well, Miranda, because I have to get you back. <laughs> it's you're fine. Not, you're not going to call me this stupid is a, on my own show. This is a, <laughs> <laughs> this is a compliment. I, I want a pearl as and, Yeah, I want a pearl. Well, I want a pearl and pussy. Ooh. Yeah, pearly. It's a pearly poo. A pearly puss. Hello, okay, hello, go. baby. Okay, she get, you go. Are we ready? Hello. Hi, Fanita. Big fan of the pod. Hi. I just wanted to know what are like your favorite places to go and have a girls' night in LA. Um, I would be curious to know Raven's um, input on this as well. I feel like as a black woman, and this is black people, I feel like it's sometimes it's hard to find places in LA that you can be with other mm. black people and party and have a good time. And also feel safe, question mark. Yeah. So yeah. like, what's your favorite places to like hang around LA, drink, um. dance? and have a good time thank you my favorite place is I'm my definitely apartment. your assistant because she didn't want to know my answer so miss raven and miss Fanita, <laughs> <laughs> i just got a call for both of you wanting to know your favorite place thank you caller <laughs> um my favorite place is my apartment i don't like to leave my house i like to be at home because like go the going out scene in la just doesn't resonate with me anymore like when yeah. i was when i first moved here i was going out but like I don't really enjoy the music. The drinks are high as fuck. It's mad expensive. Like, I'm not trying to... They be acting fake bougie out here. Like, there's nobody in the club, but the line is wrapped around the corner. It's all for show and giggles. And it's like, I can drink for free at my house, play the music I want to hear at my house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fuck on my man. So it's like, why do I need to leave? Immediately, yes. I would co-sign that. It's definitely a friend house party Mm -hmm. not a random house party back in the day i was like i said i was in the clubs all the time so you would find me at hyde you would find me at um my goodness i don't even have the names they're so old school but it was different it was a different Mm -hmm. vibration it was a different group of people now it's like you'll catch me at my friend's studio and we're just chilling there Mm -hmm. you know what i mean or everybody comes over and we play board games like we'll have a game night mm-hmm. with friends because you know you're safe you know no one's out yes. here trying to catch you and out you here. know nobody's trying to record you exactly like, catch, you, catch you slip and that's another thing too like i can't go out like being in public because like i don't trust nobody exactly like everybody's out to like record you or get you slipping or something i like just being with my friends doing stuff with them and like they come over we can do karaoke at my apartment like all you bought you bought the bottle so you know nothing's getting slipped yep. inside mm-hmm. of it you can go and take whatever kind of you know exciting moments you want to mm-hmm. and no one's gonna judge you for it that's that's, that's so basically Basically, you guys have told our caller to stay at home. <laughs> I'm going to tell her to go to LACMA. What is LACMA? That is the that Los, is Angeles Los Angeles County, County Museum, Museum of Art. They serve alcohol there. They, they have do. live music. Go, You'll be safe. Go there. LACMA's actually a really good one, babes. And um, honey, um, Huntington Beach? No, not Huntington no. Beach. Huntington, Huntington Gardens. Gardens. But that's not a place you can go at night. I think mm. that like if she wants a little bit of a night thing, you have some culture, you have like Go to the Grove. Freedom, and you go with your friends. Yeah, the Grove is nice. The Grove is cute. You just want to like, walk around and be pretty. Yeah. yeah. And like get a drink. And yeah. Does whatever. the Third Street Promenade still pop? I don't know what that is. No, that is that's literally. Gone. Well, it's not gone, but I think that that's like if you want to see people taking peas or poops on the ground. <laughs> well, that's like we saw when we were pulling up here. Oh, yeah. was there? I thought that <laughs> was, was in front of your house. <laughs> she don't know that she just came for you and then she says you came back. We both, saw we did come for each other. My wife was being like. <laughs> Wait, she was being genuine? <laughs> she wasn't trying to come for you. Oh, no. 
I wasn't trying to come for you. That, <laughs> I thought you were trying to shame my studio. No, no <laughs> that legitimately happened. I love your studio. I was just like, you, have you met Miranda? In my head, yeah, oh, oh, Miranda. The, Hello. The, the, the tone of your voice doesn't change in octaves, so everything you say sounds like shade. So I thought you were trying to be shady. I think I, I'm starting to learn this is a problem. <laughs> my tone. I don't have the. I yeah, I know. You. Thank you. I guess we don't have to go to couple therapy anymore. Yes. To go so to a vocal coach. Bottoms up. Where I say relationships one lesbian at a time. <laughs> we love you. This is great. Uh, I know. I love. Oh my god. I've loved having you guys here. This, this was fun. so much this fucking really fun. fun. This might be my first, my favorite episode that I've ever filmed. But unfortunately, Aww. you guys got to go home. You, you gotta, right. I got to get the out. Yeah, you got yeah. to get the off my set. Um, <laughs> so this has been a brand new episode of Bottoms Up with Vanita, Raven, and Miranda. Where can people find you? What do you have upcoming? You can find us on our socials. Raven Simone is all my handles. For Miranda, it's Miranda Mayday for all her handles. You, she has. You want to? You want me to go through? You know, go, babe. Cool. She's she also so has professional. A, she also has a sub. She also has a sub stack. Very important to go check it out. TikTok. You can catch us there, especially when there's some cool stuff going on. Go catch us out there. And um, we have a production company, and there's going to be some more content that we're going to be releasing. And don't forget, most of all, to check out Tea Time with Raven and Miranda right here on YouTube. And I will be on Tea Time. Uh, I don't know when it's going to air, but I'm. Going yeah, on she going tomorrow. on it. Yeah, yeah I'm going on it tomorrow. <laughs> She's um, coming to my house. Yeah, and she's going to make me some pussy-covered spaghetti. <laughs> that I am. And you might see a homeless person shitting or pissing. You, you definitely <laughs> will. And I will record it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try Don't try me again. <laughs> Not too much. Not too much on my set. Um, Guys, it's me. It's your girl. Also, can y'all comment on my hair and tell me it looks pretty? I'm First of all, it. it looks so beautiful. Okay. I love it. I want to touch it and smell it. It's it does smell good. Well, actually, it might not. I got a dry scalp. Um, I love you guys. Uh, it's been a brand new episode of Bottoms Up with Fanita, the baddest bitch on TV right now, or I guess on YouTube. I don't f- you know. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the Pastor Bedtime YouTube channel, and tell me what you loved about this episode, and tell me that my tics look great. All right, I will see you next Monday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>